Here 2.5 architecture part one. Um, this is a very long and detailed uh, chapter. So architecture, we're going to look over a long period of time the development of architecture and the different types that there are. Three-dimensional design that surrounds and influences us. It connects us to our history, suggests feelings of permanence, and it's produced by an architect, interior designer, and landscape architect. Architect, not always on the landscape, but quite often. So structure, function, and form, architectural engineers work to create a balance between tension and compression. Push equals pull. So tension of weight and uh, compression down below. Um, we'll get into that a little bit more. Each building resists uh, compression or tension differently. We talk about tensile strength. That's one of the words that we talk about. But if it's balanced correctly, a building can stand for thousands of years. Um, this is a piece that is 500 years old, not thousands, but um, you, it was built in just such a way that um, had a really good amount of balance. So when you look at domes, that puts a lot of downward thrust into these pillars here. And this is another segment here called a pendentive, and we're going to get more f in a lot further into this, but um, several cultures use domes. Um, but this particular arch architect, Sinan, um, this mosque in Turkey uh, is has been standing a long time, very strongly built, um, and he innovated in, in a couple different ways. So he's got uh, domes and half domes, so it's an enduring design. Um, so we look at the four, this image of the Four World Trade Center. It's a sketch of 2006. Um, so his complicated beginnings begin with the simplicity of a drawing. If you look at Maya Lin's sketch for the Vietnam Memorial, too, she's an architect, but she does make um, earthworks or sculpture memorials that are sort of in between those two things, architecture and sculpture. But anyway, her sketch was so simple, and um, it really conveyed a lot of energy um, to the final design. So this is the design for the New World Trade Center. I don't think this was the winning one in the end. Um, in New York City, uh, and then how this building's going to fit in with the other buildings just quickly. Uh, Taos Pueblo, this is a really amazing structure. It's been it's the longest continuous building um, lived in without change uh, in human history. It's a thousand years uh, old. So um, I've been there. It's really interesting. Uh, I I have been up to Taos a couple of times. It's a really an amazing place, and it's just the sense of walking into a space that that's is that old. It's just really intense feeling. Um, but anyway, it's several storied structure. It's adobe. You can kind of see these wood. Um, sorry, that's an outpouring like a little uh, uh, drain spout. But these wood uh, boards going here, sort of helping up the structure. Um, there is some wood in the framework, but basically it's stacking and piling. These are adobe bricks. You can kind of see the straw and the adobe sticking out here. And it has to be replastered and redone uh, over the time. You can see some of the cracking and the exposure here. Uh, it has to be resurfaced continually for rain and so on. But mostly it's a high desert. It's, I think, six or 7,000 feet high. Uh, high desert um, uh, living area and uh, a lot of na native clay nearby to make these adobe bricks. These are not fired in a kiln. Adobe is just left outside and it has uh, manure sometimes to make it stickier and hay or sticks or other materials thrown in, but it's mostly clay and then it's stacked up in a brick-like formation and covered. Um, so the character derives from the available materials so this has reflected the community in the way that it is made out of sand and clay. Totally different um, image and, and place, New York. So these are some Soho lofts, and these have some older buildings. What tends to happen in New York, well, many things happen in New York in a rapid succession, but these are some older buildings that have been done over to loft spaces. So some of the interiors um, have been changed but the exteriors of uh, New York City's buildings um, tend to stay the same. 
um, and that is something that um, is admired. Ancient construction is usually stacking and piling, but we get into some other things as well. Stone, wood, and clay are modified to use for construction. Raw materials can result in architecture that transcends time. So load-bearing construction, that is stacking and piling, is one type of load-bearing construction. Um, so you're piling one stone or brick uh, on top of another. And massive load-bearing works have been built throughout history. They're easier in terms of um, the weight holding up. Um, there's no interior space inside of this. There's a little bit of interior space at the very top, but this particular piece is not holding all this weight. Like if it were down here, you wouldn't be able to make an open space because of the heaviness of all this stone. Um, this is a Mayan temple, and it was built in 300 to 900 of the Common Era, so it's uh, just over a thousand, close to 2,000 years old, um, and it, it's something that was constructed by stacking and piling stones. So no hollow open area here, a little bit right there to go in with the method of uh, building and then a staircase that goes up this way. Hundreds of pyramids in Guatemalan rainforest. And I think I mentioned this too with the land art. Uh, more, they're finding these because the, it, it sticks out when there's a geometric shape when you're flying over, you know, with a plane and they do these kind of scans. It's not radar and I can't remember what it's called. But they do these scans, and now they're finding these geometric structures uh, inside the jungle. So these get grown over. If you can see the jungle around it, um, the jungle grows over quite quickly, and then these things disappear. So to reappear, they, they have used this sort of radar to find, find them and to um, sort of clean them up and make it available for us to see now. So this one's a Guatemalan in Guatemala, where we are now in the rainforest. Rainforest, very rapid growth. And they're platforms for temples. So that little tiny space right there, that is the temple. So this is a Mayan pyramid built similar to the Egyptian pyramids, but um, with no hollow or open space inside. So we're looking here. You can see the stacking and piling a little bit here. You don't just stack it in a straight column, because if you did that, if you don't vary where the joints are, you're going to have a lot of construction problems. So you do one row, doesn't matter which way, but the second row has to vary and stagger. So this is um, one stone is here, and then the seam does not match up with the other seam. Does that make sense? So these are the platforms. The temple is this piece on the top. Post and lintel is our next type of architectural construction. comes much later. And we're going to create an interior space. An architect must create a span. Okay, so a doorway, if you think of a doorway, that is a span. And the lintels are the sides of the door. So the span, the top of the door, that is a span or a lintel. And I'm sorry, did I say, did I say uh, door? the sides of the door are posts. The top is a lintel, okay? Here's our image. So this looks just like a doorway or a window, um, but this is what has to happen whether you see this in the uh, construction or not. There has to be a beam that goes across here and some posts that hold it, and then maybe perhaps we put our window in here, um, and we might cover all this over and we don't even see it, but that is what has to happen because the weight of this support has to be supported by these posts. Now when we're using wood, it has more tensile strength, um, and if we're using stone, stone is very brittle, and the stress of the weight coming down on these two areas promotes cracking toward the middle. Um, so we're looking at the great court of the Temple Amon Re in um, Egypt. This is Karnak, the Karnak uh, area, like uh, in Karnak, Egypt is where a lot of the temples are. Just amazing, stunning work. Now you can see it right here. Our posts are here, columns. Now often posts are columns, but not always. It's just another, this is a stone column that's been carved. And then we have a stone lintel up here. Imagine, you know, without machinery, without power tools, getting this sucker up on top of these giant columns. It's quite high. 
this is human scale. I think down here, this, that's like six foot height down here. We don't have a person in this image to tell us. But at any rate, there's a limit with stone how far it can uh, span across these two columns. So the Egyptians figured out pretty much the limit of what could happen there. Um, these might be newer ones that have been replaced. They have done that a little bit, depending on the culture or the, um, the preservation process. Um, sometimes they replace things, sometimes they don't. Um, but this one looks to be quite a bit older. That looks like a, a newer one, but I don't know that for sure. So this is called the Hypostyle Hall. It's a room created by using a series of columns to support a flat ceiling. So there is a ceiling there that we're not seeing that is not brought back. So, And I will tell you, I'm skipping slightly ahead, in the Colosseum in Rome, which is um, I think about a thousand years later, about 700 years later, um, they reconstructed part of it. So now when you go into the uh, Colosseum of Rome, you can see some of the wood and um, other materials that did not survive. They've reconstructed it so you can see what it, what it looked like back 2,000 years ago. But anyway, this one we don't have that wooden uh, ceiling that, that was there. But this was used by Egyptian priests for rituals, and it's one of the largest religious structures in the world. Um, it w other views of this you can kind of see into it and there's multiple columns and there's rows and columns and there's a bigger area um, for gathering people together okay so we're still at post and lintel we've changed cultures not too dissimilar time frame so this is 400 BC before the common era before the year zero this is 700 BC so about 300 years later uh, the Greeks are just across the Mediterranean from the Egyptians. you got to keep that in mind. Think of the maps that you have access to in the book and elsewhere. And we have our columns here that go up, and we have a um, lintel that goes across. And we, the Greeks are really good at math, really good at architecture, figuring out uh, exactly what... Uh, can be supported here and then we have some stacking and piling going on on the sides you can see the stonework and you see the variation of um, the the rows here as it goes up so it's very strong so it's 2,000 year old building almost 1600 year old oh I bet I beg your pardon BC I didn't you know I'm doing it I'm badly my own self um, so 24 year old 2400 year old piece and it's in pretty decent shape. Sadly, a lot of the damage, this is at the top of the Acropolis, and we're near the Parthenon here, but we're looking at um, a smaller temple on the Acropolis, this outcropping on top of a, a hill in Athens, the city of Athens. But it was really, I think, in the 1700s when it was damaged, unfortunately. It was almost in, well, I would say perfect shape, but it was in very good shape. So, post and lintel, and... Um, they were very much aware of the Nile Valley, yes, of course. Different columns, we'll get back to that in a moment. 